Hello, guys, and welcome to Stretch Street Podcast. This is the energetic AJ. Yes, I hope you're doing fantastically well. I'm glad to be here again today. Now, my guest on the show today. He's been all of these things that I'm about to mention. Pay attention, okay? He's been NCAA Division I college basketball player. He's been a marketing executive. He's been a hospital administrator. He's been a customer service manager. He's been a SWAT hostage negotiator, a, a business owner, a high school basketball coach, and a cancer warrior. Now, here are four th- truths um, my guest encourages and guides and support anyone, including you watching this right now or listening to me, um, that he comes in contact with. Number one is control your mind or it will control you. Number two is embrace the pain and discomfort we all experience in life and use it to make you a stronger and more resilient individual. Number three, what you leave behind is what you weave in the heart of other people. I love that one. And number four is as long as you don't quit, You can never be defeated. You see, when I read this one, it jumped at me. It spoke to me, Tommaso, and I hope it's speaking to you right now, but we're going to dive into some of these details in a short while from now. His mission, here it is, to consistently enrich and improve lives through inspiring, diverse, and uplifting content without sacrificing the relationships with family and friends. This mission is accomplished by providing world-class speaking engagements, podcasts like this one, radio and television interviews, daily blog post things, books, and coaching. Now he's been on over 600 podcasts. Talk about a pod star. (laughs) He's the founder of Motivational Check LLC and an author. Dear Stretch Street stars, please join me and welcome my guest today, Terry Tucker, all the way from Colorado, US of A. Stretch Street Podcast. Hello, 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 Tucker. How are you today? Well, I'm going to stick with Terry. Hi, Terry. How are you today? (laughs) Energetic EJ, I am great. I am really looking forward to talking to you today. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Now I'm going to start my my first question. Let us start from that list, okay, of the things you've been. I'll call it your career journey, right? Is it in chronological order? The way that I listed it? Pretty much. Pretty yeah, much. Pretty much it's oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that journey. Like summarize it for me. How? Because it seems so diverse. Like, how do we move from, you know, basketball to marketing executive to hospital administrator to customer care to SWAT? Like, how? Please give us a little backstory there. Sure. And and, and there is there is a backstory. And once you understand the backstory. The resume makes a little bit more sense, a little bit, not not 100%. But I wanted to be uh, a police officer. I wanted to follow in my grandfather's footsteps. My grandfather was a Chicago police officer from 1924 to 1954 and was actually shot in the line of duty with his own gun. It was not a serious injury, but he was shot in the ankle. And my dad, who was an infant at the time, remembered the stories my grandmother told of that knock on the door of Mrs. Tucker, grab your son, come with us, your husband's been shot. So when I expressed an interest in following in my grandfather's footsteps, my dad was absolutely not. You're going to go to college. You're going to major in business. You're going to get out, get a great job, get married, have 2.4 kids and live happily ever after. But that's what my father wanted me to do. And when I graduated from college, my father was dying of cancer. So I had a major life decision to make. I could have said, sorry, dad, I know you're dying, but I'm going to go do what I want to do and blaze my own trail and be a police officer. Or out of love and respect for you, I will do what you want me to do. So the first two jobs were in business because that's what my father wanted me to do. And I sort of joke, I did what every good son did. I waited till my father passed away 
and then I followed my own dreams. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's, it's, why, Terry? This is such mixed feelings, right? It's almost like bitter, sour, sweet, like a mixture of everything. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. What a story. Now it makes, like you said, a bit of sense. Actually, a lot of sense. <laughs> But thank you for sharing that story in such a, a, a you know, in a nutshell um, for us today. So my next question for you is, can you share with us the turning point moment when your four truths were developed? Now you have these four truths that you live by. I want to believe that you didn't just wake up one morning and like, okay, now, henceforth, I am going to work with these four truths. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that... that in all honesty, it started out with three truths. And it started out with three truths because I was on a podcast that was your three three truths. And I'm like, well, I better figure out what my truths wow. are if I'm going to be on a podcast and talk about them. So the, the first three were control your mind, embrace your pain. And as long as you don't quit, you can never be defeated. But the more I grew, the more I read, the more I learned, I really felt that that sort of fourth one. And we like things in threes, you know, ABC, Father, Son, Holy <laughs> Spirit. I mean, we just like things in threes. But I really felt like I needed to add that fourth one, which is more of a legacy mm. type of truth. You know, about, uh, you know, what you leave behind is what you weave in the hearts of other people. And, you know, the more I started to think about them, the more I started to develop them and and they are, I call them the bedrock of my soul. They're, I think, just a good place to start to try to build a quality life. That is of. so beautiful. That is so beautiful. Can you remember a particular moment, you know, apart from like the fourth one, for example, is there any particular event that kind of shaped those words for you to, because if, if, if it feels a little bit poetic, like, you know, the way you live is how you weave in the heart of, you know, those you meet. So it was there a particular moment or a particular incident that made you craft that particular message. I, I think that, you know, the, the legacy type of one really kind of came to flourishing for me when I developed cancer. I, I was diagnosed with, with terminal uh, melanoma. I have a rare form of melanoma. Back in 2012, they told me that I would be dead in two years. Well, it's 12 years now, and I'm I'm still not dead. But it's it's the the focus on the thinking about the being interested in, and this is going to sound weird, I'm sure, to a lot of your audience. Mm -hmm. Death. You know, the the Stoic philosophers used to talk about momentum mori, which is remember death, remember that we're all going to die. And it's not so much the focus on the death part. What that should do is get you to focus on the living part, on how you live your life with some type of urgency, with what is your purpose in this world? We all have a purpose. I 100% believe that. We're not just here kind of walking around and then we die. No, there's a reason. Because you have unique gifts and talents. I have unique gifts and talents. My talents aren't yours. Your talents aren't mine. But understanding what your talents, your gifts are, and then using them in some purpose in life is really why we've been put here. And so I think so many people just kind of muddle through their lives. They, they never search for their purpose. They never look for it. They never, ever, ever imagine what it is like to be great mm. at anything, at anything, you know, making an omelet, you know, just what is it? What does it mean to be great? So many people never even think about that. Wow. Wow. From my experiences and, and, and the way that I've spoken to people all over the world and the, the, the core of what I do with this podcast is, you know, for everyone that I've met who have had a near death experience, they are, um, their understanding or their outlook to life is always very, very different and deep and, you know, more meaningful, richer, fuller, more purposeful, right? My question to you is, right now, your reality, does it align, like your current reality, does it align with the vision you had while you were growing up, right? Or 
would you say, because again, you just talked about purpose, discovering it and everything, you know, on, on that journey to discovering purpose, that it's, it's a journey. It's, it's something that you, you know, walk into, but for some, it almost feels like they kind of have a glimpse or, uh, uh, like, uh, what's that thing they call the blueprints or like, you know, something to work with. Was that the case for you? So it's your reality now in alignment with the vision you had for yourself? No, in, in all honesty, it, it hasn't been. And I, I think we, we tend to talk about purpose in the singular, like it's one thing. And at least in my life, I found that I've had purposes, plural, that when I was young, I was, my purpose was to be an athlete. I, I mean, I loved basketball. I played basketball all the time. And then when I got into adulthood, I think my purpose changed in wanting to be in law enforcement and things like that. And now I think my purpose has changed even again, as I'm in all honesty, probably coming towards the end of my life to put as much goodness, positivity, motivation, love back into the world as I possibly could. And, and let me say this, I, one of the nurses who I, I still am treated for cancer, I have tumors in my lungs, one of the nurses that takes care of me periodically is a former, former hospice nurse who took care of, of basically people at the end of their life, people who were dying. And she recommended a book to me called Imagine Heaven. And it's, it's, mm. a, book, it's a book about people who had, as you just talked about, near-death experiences. Mm. And the mm. thing that I took away from that book, I took a lot of things away from it, but the one thing that I found interesting in that book is that no matter who the person who had the near-death experience encountered or saw, whether it was Jesus or God or an angel or a saint or a relative or a friend, the one right. question that everybody got asked was, how did you treat or how do you treat my people? In other words, how do we treat each other? How do we take care of each other? How do we care for each other? How do we love each other? And I'll be honest with you, when I was young, I was probably very selfish. You know, it was like, I just want to play basketball and it's all about me. And what I've come to understand now, it's not about me. It's about us. I don't do well by myself. I do much better when I'm in a group with other people. That is so fantastic. Thank you for sharing that with us. And when, you know, because this is, this podcast kind of document this, you know, really, because I mean, for you to have even like had the story and then you are now facing yours, you know, first of all, it's like the dream, what your dream wanting to be taken away from you. And then you're getting back on it. And then cancer is here trying to, you know, grab you away and everything. These are challenges. These are stretchy periods, right? Correct. The, the one of the goal is to, it like, distill the life lessons that you've learned so now my question is i know your four truths these are these must have come out from life lessons but i want to ask if you have more tricks in your bag when we talk about life lessons that you have learned from your experience so far <laughs> I, I i have you know and and i think i think one of the things is we should always and all of us should be lifelong learners there should never be a point in time where we say, I know enough, you know, where, where I get out of school, well, I know everything I need to know about life. I don't. And what I thought, and I was totally wrong about this, was the more I read, the more I learned, the more I grew as a person, that I would have fewer and fewer questions, that my questions would be answered as I got smarter and I learned more about life. And what I find is the more I learn, the more questions I have, you know, they, it, it never ends. And, and it shouldn't be. I want to die learning. I don't ever want to get to a point in my life where I say enough. I, I know enough because I don't think I do because there's always life is always changing. There's always different people to meet who have different backgrounds, different experiences than mine. And, you know, a lot of times we tend to look at life as, you know, the, I, I talk about it in terms of perception uh, and perspective. Perception is mm. how we see the world. And that's based on our education, our background, our experience, our upbringing, our religion. But perception is 
how other people see the world. And if you focus on mm. that, instead of looking at life the way you see it, if you can focus on the way other people see it, you will be so much more engaged. You will be so much more intelligent because it's like we have one focus. If we can broaden that focus on how other people view life based on the same thing we did, their upbringing, their education, their experiences, then all of a sudden we're continuing to learn because we all have different perspective. We all have different perceptions. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Because that is one of the, that is one of the blessing of what I do on this podcast. Just having this different perspective, even though we're talking about almost the same thing. Like everyone is coming here to talk about their different challenges, you know, how they've navigated it. But at the same time, even when it feels like the stories are similar, they are very, very different because the lessons that each person learns from it, the way they communicate the lessons that they've learned is just different and it's refreshing. It is. It just kind of tell how vast we are as humans. Like we are truly eternal because it can never end. Like you can keep talking to all seven or eight billion people in the world and there will be a different perspective. And I just love what you just said. Now, my um the next question for you as we are getting to uh, getting to you know round, round this up is is there any project you're currently working on that you want to share with us that you want us to know I, I, and i say this because i mean you just said it in passing but it kind of hit me in a way you know when you said you know you still have you know two more in your lungs right now and you are aware and and you know aware that you know time is ticking and everything i just want to say what projects are you working on that you want to share with us? Yeah, so about four years ago, I wrote a book called Sustainable Excellence. And it's a book about success, which is what we do. How can we be successful? How can we as an individual be successful? I'm working on another book right now that also, I don't really have a title for it yet, but also is about another word that begins with S, and that word is significance. Success mm. is what we do for ourselves. Significance is what we do for other people. Now, don't get me wrong. I think you can be both. I think you can be successful and significant. But I wanted this second book to be more about how we can help each other, not so much how you can help yourself to be successful. I wrote a book about that. This is, this is I think, an even more important book about how we can be we can be significant in other people's lives. So that's one of the things I'm working on right now. Uh, I'm working on a webinar with, with some doctors uh, to talk about potential alternatives to health. Um, I'm still doing podcasting. And, and then every three weeks, I'm at the hospital all week to be treated for the tumors in my lungs. So I, I feel an urgency to live, to, to not just sit around and things like that. And, and I think that has to do with the fact that you know, I, I should be dead right now. And for some reason, I'm not. And I remember yeah. my, my doctor, after I, I, I had my leg amputated in 2020, and I found out I had these tumors in my lungs. And my doctor showed me my, my CT scan, my CAT scan. And I have no medical background. I don't know how to read a CAT scan. But you can kind of look at it and be like, <laughs> well, that sure doesn't look like it belongs there. You know, I had these, these big tumors in my lungs and fluid all around the pleural spaces on the outside of my lungs. And I remember looking at my doctor and saying, how, how was I alive? And I will never forget this. He, he put his head down, he shook his head no, and then he looked up at me and he said, I don't know because you shouldn't have been. Which said to me that God's not done with me yet. You know, when I die, where I die, how I die, way above my pay grade. Don't spend a lot of time worrying about the dying spend more time worrying about the living. I love it. Oh, so <laughs> oh, that just blessed me really. Thank you so, so much. How can people find you if they want to like, I want to read about it. Wait, what? Did he just mention that he, he has an amputated leg and he's still bad? Yes, yes, you heard that, but we want you to go find out how can people find you. <laughs> sure, so I have a, a blog sort of slash website called Motivational Check. Every day I put up a thought for the day. And with that thought usually comes a question about how maybe you could apply that thought in your life. I have 
recommendations for books to read, videos to watch, you can leave me a message. That's all at motivationalcheck.com. Absolutely. I'm going to leave all the links in the comments um, and all the links that you have, like other, you know, on the, I checked out the website and I love how simple it is. I love the, the, the quotes of the day that just popped at you, you know, first, that's really um, um, interesting. Thank you so much, Terry, for really choosing to leave you know, and say, you know, I'm not going to worry about, it's going to happen anyways, but let's focus more on the living and how we leave, you know, what you weave, <laughs> what you weaving, bro. <laughs> What are you weaving in the hearts of people around you? So thank you so much. Would you have any final words for anyone watching you right now and saying to themselves, maybe they're going through or they've also, you know, been diagnosed and given this news and they're downcast and they're wondering like, why? How can you speak to that person to help them find hope right now? Yeah, I, I'll give you a story. And, and this is a true story and, and sort of hang with me for a minute because it's going to start out kind of weird. But back in the 1950s at Johns Hopkins University here in the United States, there was a professor that did a very was doing experiments with rats. And one of the things he, he did is he took rats and he put them in a tank of water that was over their head. And he wanted to see how long the average rat could tread water. And the average rat treaded water for about 15 minutes. And just as those rats were getting ready to sink and drown, he reached in, grabbed them, pulled them out, dried them off, and let them rest for a while. And then he took the exact same rats and put them back in that exact same tank of water. And the second time around, on average, those rats treaded water for 60 hours. Now think about that, the first time, 15 minutes. It's not like you're gonna flunk a test or your business is gonna go under. No, you're gonna die, your life is gonna be over. And the second time around, 60 hours, which taught me two things. Number one, the importance of hope in our lives. That if you know you're doing the right thing, maybe not today, maybe not this month, maybe not even this year, but if you know you're doing the right thing, there's a good chance somewhere down the road, you will get to where you want to be. And the second thing it taught me was just how much more our physical bodies can handle than we ever thought they could. Now, don't get me wrong. I think we all have a breaking point, but that breaking point is so much further down the road. We, we get into pain. We get into difficulty. We get into we're tired. We don't feel good. And our brain says, hey, stop. Stop this. You, we, we don't like that. But if you can push past your brain, if you can callous your brain to, you know what, my body can handle a whole lot more than you're telling me right now. So don't be afraid of pain. Take that pain. Use it. Flip it inside of you. Burn it as fuel. Use it as energy to make you a stronger and more resilient individual. Oh, bless your heart, Terry Tucker. Thank you so much for being such a blessing. I am blessed, guys. I hope you are too. I hope this conversation has just instilled some hope in you. I hope you're inspired to pursue your purpose and know that it's not one thing. It is a journey and it evolves as you evolve as a human being. So go for it. Be that person that God has created you to be and just live stop worrying about death because it's going to happen anyway so why worry just go ahead and live while you're here thank you thank you thank you i really can't thank you enough i had a great time on this conversation and i just want to wish you all the very best um with your book there was no keep in touch so that when it's out we can probably have you here again come talk about significance i would love to hear you speak over and over and over again God bless you. Thank you for waking up so early to be here today. Have a fantastic <laughs> rest of the day and an amazing weekend ahead. Thank you very much. You do the same. Awesome. All right, guys. So this is it on this episode. Until I come your way again next week, remember, I always say this. Challenges are not exclusive to any of us. We all go through them. But when we assume the posture of saying, why is this happening to me? Not in the sense of why is this happening to me? But what am I to learn from this experience? We become better because when we are able to distill the lessons, we are able to add more value to our world. But we're also able to become more valuable people because 
because we would become inspiration to other people. So remember, you're not alone. You're not alone. You're not special in a weird way that all the challenges are coming to you. We all have our versions of it and we are all together in this race. So don't stay alone. All right reach out, reach out to somebody, speak to somebody, you know, get that hug, ask for it if you do need it sometimes. All right. I'll be here again next week with another guest. Um, until then, remember you are amazing. See you next week. Bye-bye.